In this session, we're going to study energy pyramids. Energy pyramids are an important concept in ecology because as a teacher, they lend themselves to writing questions on the test. So nearly any test that you take on ecology, you're going to have at least one, if not more, questions about an energy pyramid. So let's start by taking a look at one. At the very bottom, we have the producers. In this case, we have phytoplankton, cyanobacteria, and algae. Now, those are not producers that we would normally uh, be familiar with, but this is a marine ecosystem, so it's not something that we come in contact with as often. Producers get their energy from the sun. They make their own food through the process of photosynthesis. Another name for a producer that we might run into is autotroph. An autotroph meaning on their own. Something that's automatic happens on its own, and autotroph is able to make its food on its own. As we move up the food chain, we see that we have labeled here herbivores. Anything that is unable to make its own food is a consumer. So everything in this range is a consumer. Okay, you'll notice that the amount of energy in each level decreases as we rise. So let's say we start out with 90,000 kcals of energy. 90,000 kcal is, an, is a unit of energy. So if we start out with 90,000 of these units of energy. Every level that we raise on the energy pyramid, we go down by 10%. So now we have 9,000 kcals. The zooplankton, the snails, and the urchins these herbivores which are eating the phytoplankton, cyanobacteria, and algae. If we were to write a fruit, food web, we would draw those as arrows. We always draw the arrows pointing towards the mouth of what's eating them. So these zooplankton have to do other things. They have to reproduce. They have to try to escape from things that are trying to eat them. Just their day-to-day -day living uses up energy. So they don't have as much energy as the level below them. So there's 9,000 kcal in these. Okay, we call these consumers. Since these are the first consumers, we call these primary consumers. As we move further up, we start getting into carnivores. Carnivores, they also cannot make their own food, like producers can. So what they do is they eat other consumers. So these primary, these consumers, these sea stars, whale sharks, and most of the fish that are in the ocean are going to be eating primary consumers and each other. Okay, so these levels right here, the secondary carnivores and these carnivores, are all consuming one another. Okay, and as we go higher with each successive level, we have less and less energy that's left because these fish are having to escape uh, from being eaten from each other to go find the snails. As we go higher into the secondary carnivores, now we're only talking about 90 kcals of energy. These secondary carnivores and carnivores together, we would call the secondary consumers. Then we move to the top of the energy pyramid, the apex predators, or what we might also refer to as the tertiary consumers. These are the top of the food chain, the tiger shark, the moray eel, the things that nothing else will prey upon. Okay? As we keep moving, as we said, each level is 10% of the energy of the level below it. So there's only 9 kcals of energy left in the system starting at 90,000. Okay, so what that means is that most of our energy is at the bottom of the energy pyramid. As we move up, the amount of energy that's in the energy pyramid decreases. Now, the energy doesn't disappear. It's just used in moving around and swimming and running uh, in other ways. Energy doesn't get destroyed. It's just used uh, in, in the process of living. Everything that's a consumer can also be referred to as a heterotroph. So a consumer and a heterotroph mean the same thing. Where do we have the most number of organisms? Again, starting at the bottom, we by far have the most producers. If you think about going outside, do you see more squirrels or do you see more grass? There are far more producers than there's anything else. As we move up, the number of those species decrease as well. The one classification of uh, organism that is not found on this food pyramid is the decomposers. The decomposers are the garbage men of the ecosystem. 
De decomposers are not represented on this food pyramid because they're active at each level. Whenever any of these organisms dies and is left in the environment, the decomposers are the ones who break down that organism and return its nutrients back to the environment, providing all the nutrients needed to sustain the food pyramid. Let's take a look at another food pyramid to see what kind of questions may be asked on a test. One of the first questions that you may see on a test is where is there the most energy in the food pyramid? As we discussed before, most of the energy is found in the base of the food pyramid. As we move up, there's less and less energy. Again, that's because these organisms are having to undergo life activities, run away from things that are trying to eat them, trying to go get food themselves, trying to find uh, a mate. All of that uses energy. So the higher you move up in the food chain, the less energy that there is uh, contained in that species. We may ask you, where is there the most biomass? That just means where is there the most amount of these organisms? Okay, We know that there's the most biomass down here at the base. As we move up, we have less and less biomass. All right, and that makes sense. We see way more plants than we do Osprey. Okay, we may also ask you, where are the heterotrophs in this food chain? Okay, heterotrophs are everything that cannot make their own food. So these represent the heterotrophs. Okay, heterotrophs are the opposite of autotrophs. Heterotrophs are also called consumers. Autotrophs are also called producers. So these would be the producers or autotrophs down here. And everything in yellow is a heterotroph. We might ask you where are the primary consumers? Primary consumers are the ones that eat only autotrophs. Okay, so these are the primary consumers. We might also call them herbivores. Okay. We may ask you where all of the energy comes from in the food pyramid. Ultimately, where does all the energy come from? Energy comes from the sun. Okay. We may ask you where the tertiary consumers are. Tertiary consumers are the apex predators. They're the ones at the top of the food chain that nothing else eats. And finally, we may ask you what uh, type of organism is not represented on this food pyramid. And we are missing the decomposers. Decomposers, their job is to break down any of this biomass once it dies.